special presentation in conversation with Sri Sri Ravi Shankar and Dr. Naresh Trehan as part of the global exhibition on services, the India Opportunity, brought to you by the Government of India and the Confederation of Indian Industry. I'm Shireen Bhan. It is indeed an honor to speak with Sri Sri Ravi Shankar. I've had the opportunity about the same time last year to have a conversation with him, and uh, I remember walking away uh, with the understanding better the art of smiling, not so much the art of living, but the art of smiling. So I'm hoping that we, uh, that we can share some insights here on what it means to live in a fast-paced world where you're inundated with information, you're inundated with the need to react to everything that's coming your way. How do you pause? How do you uh, find your purpose? How do you find your passion? And eventually, how do you find your peace? I would imagine that that will be uh, the topic of conversation here with Sri Sri Ravi Shankar uh, as I start this off. Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, uh, Mahatma Gandhi said, speak only if it improves upon the silence. I know that you've mastered the art of silence, so I'm hoping that you're going to speak today. Uh, so let me start by asking you, uh, uh, the, the beauty in life comes from the fact that you have to find clarity of purpose. Purpose is what defines you. Purpose is what gives you a sense of direction. How do you find purpose today? First of all, the question, what is purpose of my life has to arise. For many, this question doesn't arise in their life. Maybe not at all or doesn't rise till they are 50 or 60. Hmm. The very question can kindle the thought process in them. And they'll start finding what they want. Hmm. What was it like for you? How did you know what your purpose was? Well, I had this idea when I was even a child. I used to say there are people all over the world and I have to go one day to meet everybody. Hmm. How, how old were you when you had that well, real uh, realization that this was your true calling? Well, this, uh, I would say when I was in my school, maybe eight, nine year old. So, you know, kids of that age usually want to have stamps and currencies, coins. They were all, those days stamps were a very big uh, fascination among people, um, students. They would collect stamps from various countries. I would say, don't worry, I'm getting uh, people all over the world. I'll give you whatever stamps you need <laughs> and whatever coins you need. And then they would ask my mother, you have relatives, friends everywhere in the world? My mother would say no. <laughs> and then my ears were pulled many times for lying. It appeared to be a big lie. Though. That was the only lie I, I would ever say. <laughs> and my mother was bewildered. Why this boy is telling such things? <laughs> my family is all over the world. I'm going to go everywhere. So why, like why were you telling such things? Well, was there a voice in your head that told you that this well, is how it, it was going to be? What was it that made you say these things? You know, we have another dimension within all of this. That's beyond rational thinking. You, you may call it the gut feeling or intuitive uh, mm. upsurge that you may get sometimes. Or a vision what might happen to you in the future. These things, uh, I think we all have. We simply have not cultivated it. We have not, like we all have ten fingers, but few can play guitar or sitar mm -hmm. very well. Mm -hmm. Then it is only a matter of training, perhaps, that can uh, kindle these uh, abilities that we all have. So is there a process to being able to kindle these abilities? Is I there didn't a do anything. For, for example, I didn't do anything. It, probably it's a gift to me. But I'm sure that people could... Uh, For those of us who are not as gifted as you. <laughs> you, you can definitely cultivate it. It's not that which is beyond anybody. Hmm. Yeah. You know, speaking of cultivating it, and I, 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 uh, it takes me back to what you said about how you had this vision of the world being your family as you were a child and about eight years old. Uh, and it was Picasso, I think, who said that every child is an artist. The problem is how to remain an artist when we grow up. And it's that childlike innocence. It's the ability to see the world as is that children enjoy, which as we grow older, the layers of how we perceive things, how people perceive us, it's the ego that gets in the way. How do we retain the childlike innocence even as we grow up? How do we retain the artist in us? 
first of all trust in yourself faith faith or trust in yourself second is your ability to handle the stress mm. stressful situation your ability to take criticism and your ability to feel connected with everybody irrespective of what the response or reaction from others are okay so that's three things that you said so let me pick up on each one of those one by one what stresses you are does anything stress you are today stress is you know too much to do too little time and no energy mm -hmm. this is a formula for stress so do you feel stressed or not do i look stressed no you're smiling so <laughs> what there are some things you can look at somebody and find out come on use your intuition here okay i'm using my intuition so so you're you're not you're not feeling the stress uh but doctor are you feeling the stress you know picking up what guru ji said the first thing basically which makes you happy and be stressed all the time is your purpose mm. of your life mm. once you found the purpose half your problems get solved right there the second thing is how you dream how you take flights of fantasy mm. and with what integrity you pursue it will be the rest of your life so i as you know work 12 hours 14 hours a day and then frequently woken up at night but as long as it's related to my mission i don't feel any stress at all mm. it's dealing with the vagaries of life outside of your mission of or of your stream that does produce the stress because mm. you you cannot be detached from your environment right so talk about negative energy positive energy mm. what was just said was as long as you are you are experiencing and exuding power positive energy you will not feel stress and you will not be miserable mm. right the moment negative thoughts come in your mind yeah. that's what not only stresses you but your environment mm. but the difference is if you encounter a person with a negative thought don't get upset don't mm. react like he said why because you are experiencing him only once he is experiencing his whole life of negativity so you pity him you don't get angry with him mm. that's the formula which i have adopted in my life to stay quite quite happy quite cool and and i don't react and get stressed from all these things and i think you you've hit the the nail on the the head but if i were to pick up on the point that dr ryan made there the sense of detachment that to to realize that you can only control your actions you cannot control what somebody else does you cannot control the external you can only control the internal how do you hone that skill well broaden your context to life it's just like a doctor walks into a, a hospital and he sees a patient and he knows they are patient and he cannot get upset over the patient hmm like a doctor a psychologist walks into a psychiatrist ward and whatever they are speaking it is it doesn't touch him it's, it's immaterial to him so he doesn't get upset or the patient so whenever someone is stressed someone is agitated someone is not behaving in a civilized or cultured manner you have to see them as patients and you should play the role, role of a doctor if you can hmm. always at least as a nurse <laughs> since we're talking about playing the role of doctors and nurses one of the criticisms of modern medicine is that it sees patients as their symptoms it sees them in parts you have a headache you have a uh, you know leg ache you have a heart problem it doesn't look at the holistic picture and that perhaps is the message that shri shri is also trying to allude to when he says broaden the context uh, as a firm believer in in the magic and uh, the principle of homeopathy which actually says that there should be individualization i e i'm different from you i'm different from him and hence my remedy is different from yours is that now going to be the way forward when you integrate spirituality modern medicine alternative medicine what is the road ahead as far as medicine so is concerned what you are alluding to basically is that the human being is half physical half mind okay what guru ji was talking about we have we had this conversation before we came here that 
you align your body, your chakras, whatever name you want to give it, has to be in balance. Mm. And to bring it in balance are the techniques that are taught by Art of Living, by Guruji, Sudarshan Chakra, all uh, Sudarshan Kriya and all that. Now, whatever form you use to reach that level of, of we describe it mod in modern medicine as this, the synchrony of sympathetic and a parasympathetic mm. tone, Sympathy, a sympathetic tone is what we describe as flight from fear. You're always ready for anger, fight something, be prepared. And parasympathetic is mm. calms you down. So if we use, and, and modern medicine is, you have a disease, let me give you something from outside to fix it. Yeah. Either it's a poison yeah. or you cut it out or you put radiation. Mm. Very, very effective, very traumatic, very expensive. So I said to Guruji, what we are working on is, and I'm using the medium of yoga, but what, I, what I've discovered from his practices and art of living that he has propounded, we can actually find the synergy between the two and come up with the fusion mm. medicine which will not only help the person individually, because you'll individualize it, yeah. but also be make it the most powerful medicine which will be m more effective, less traumatic, and less expensive that's what India needs and 4 billion people around us need. So it mm. could be that if our collaboration, if we can collaborate and make a whole holistic approach to it and create, I call it the fusion of the mm. new Indian medicine, mm. which will come out of India in my belief, it will happen in the next five to seven years and it, it shall rule the world by way of providing that combined approach to every individual where you're not only treating, treating their mm. body but their mind and soul also.